All right, we're going to work problem 9-74M on page 519. Uh, if you guys with the 6th edition could look in chapter 9 to problem 74 or thereabouts and see what you've got. I'll start reading it. Uh, it says, uh, figure P974 shows a roof beam over a loading dock of a factory building. Compute the reactions at the supports and draw the complete shearing force and bending moment diagrams. Does it match? Okay, wonderful, thank you. All right, so if you look at the figure in the, set, in the fifth edition, it's on the next page. Uh, there is a beam that spans, it looks like you could drive beneath this beam, and it holds up the roof, and we're supposed to assume that there is an eight kilonewton per meter snow load that we're designing against. That's the main load. I guess we're neglecting the weight of the roof. Right example problem. We'll work it. There we go. Back in chapter eight. Okay. Now notice they say there is a fixed end, and then at the other end of the figure it says column provides simple support. Well, what that means is that they want us to work <coughs> this problem. They want us to work the problem where the beam is fixed on one end and has a reaction, call this B, call this A, has a reaction at the end uh, that also provides support. So anyway, let me draw the loads. Notice what I'm drawing here are the reactions. At the end, we're going to have a simple supporting reaction, so a single force. At the wall, since it's a fixed support, well, then that means we have a vertical reaction as well at the moment. So uh, we've got both of those. Now the loading is a distributed load across the entire length of what they gave us, the snow load, eight kilonewtons per meter. And by the way, the beam is 6.55 meters long. Maybe that converts to some round English number. I don't know. This is just what they gave us. So we're supposed to begin by finding the complete uh, how do they put it? sharing the moment diagrams as well as the reactions. Okay, so let's do that. Now the solution to this is fairly straightforward. If you look at the appendix at A25C, I'll give you a page number, you'll see that this is exactly one of the cases that they're solved for us in the back of the book. It's a statically indeterminate problem, page 739. And we've actually worked a problem much like this as an example problem before. We ended up, maybe the last one we worked as well, that was exactly like this. Um, the reactions are pretty straightforward. The reaction at A, according to our solution here, is that it's 5 eighths of W, where W is the load per meter times the length of the beam. When you multiply that out, 8 kilonewtons per meter times 6.55 meters, you get a total load of 52.4 thousand newtons. Okay, so there's our total load. And when you multiply that by 5 eighths, well, then you get the reaction today. And that is 32.75 kilonewtons. The reaction at B is 3 eighths the total load, and that comes out to 19.65 kilonewtons. And then the moment at A is, uh, let's see, negative 0.125 WL. Now this W is still the capital W, and L is still the length. Okay, when you plug in the length and 52.4 kilonewtons, then you find that the moment is negative 42.9025 kilonewton meters if you want that many decimal places. Now that's going to be in the way when I make my shear and moment diagram, so let me move it over. Moment uh, 9025 kilonewton meters. Okay, so there are the, the reactions at the wall and uh, at the end of the beam. So now we want to draw the shear and moment diagrams. Let's do that next. So begin with a shear diagram. I think I can take up a decent amount of space here and have it all still make sense. So shear in kilonewtons. 
and a moment in kilonewton meters. Now let's see, I'll move this axis slightly below center. The shear will begin at the reaction at A, right? It'll be the same value as the reaction at A. And notice that since the reaction at A is in fact positive pushing upward, then the shear will be down, which is a positive thing. So again, uh, on the positive side of the, the axis, at 32.75 kilonewtons. Now, I don't have to think about this too much because I've got a solution right in front of me, right? All I have to do is copy what's there and put the appropriate numbers on. Yes? I think the camera was moved a little bit. Uh, it may have. Let's see. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. There we go. Sorry, I kicked it. <laughs> uh, I tripped over the cord too, so <laughs> we're even. All right, so. Uh, Let's see, so we know that the diagram looks something like this just from the solution that we've got in the back of the book. And I, I really need to begin this here, right, to match the beam. So let me try one more time. There we go. Now, the crossing occurs at 5 eighths of the length. And the way your book puts it is that this distance is 3 eighths of the length of the beam. I calculated that distance. That came out to four point. Uh, 09375. I don't know why I've got so many decimal places here. But anyway, that's the distance in meters from the left hand side, from the, the support, the fixed support. Okay? So it's about four meters or so. And that leaves us about two and a half meters or so on the other side of the wall. Now the shear comes down to the reaction at B, and so that number is, uh, let's see, negative 19.65. Now you might say, well, why is it negative? Because the reaction of B is positive. Well, all they're saying in the diagram here is that uh, this value is numerically equal to the reaction of B. And by the way, the shear would have to be in the opposite direction, right? Because think about it. The shear on, if we were to, to cut this beam right before the reaction and look at the left-hand face that we just cut, the shear would actually have to be uh, in the opposite direction, it have to be up, right? Because we haven't gotten to the support yet that will take care of the shear and drive it back to zero. So anyway, there's the uh, shear diagram. We can also draw the moment diagram fairly easily, just again copying what we've got in the solution. And we know it looks something like this. Let's see. Make all of this match. The maximum moment actually does occur where the crossing of the shear occurs, which makes sense because the moment is just the integral of the shear. So as you're adding more and more positive area, you stop adding positive area. Once it crosses, you begin adding negative area, so the moment would start going down. Okay, so that makes sense. And by the way, we need the moment at that point. Well, there's an equation for the moment at the so-called point E. That's what the solution calls it. And it says that's the <clears throat> maximum moment. Now, um, I just realized something that doesn't make sense. I don't know why they labeled it that way. I guess it's the maximum positive moment. But anyway, let's calculate it. Uh, the equation is 0 0.0703 multiplied by WL. If you plug in the same W and the length from before, then you find the moment at that point is... 24.128 or so kilonewton meters. So the moment at this point, 24.128, the moment down here actually starts with the moment at A. And that moment is negative 42.90 or so. So why they said 24 is the maximum in this solution, I don't know. That doesn't make sense to me. The maximum moment, at least in this problem, occurs at the, uh, the beginning point. I think that would always be the case. Anyway, so I don't know why they said uh, ME equals M max. I disagree with that. I think MA equals <coughs> M max. Okay. What else? Well, it looks like that uh, the crossing for the moment occurs at L over 4. I didn't calculate that distance. If you want to, you can take 6.55 divided by 4, and that's how far over that zero crossing for the moment uh, occurs. So that's what they wanted us to find, was the reactions as well as the shear and moment diagram. So now we've got all of that. Any questions on it? So our maximum shear looks like it's 32.75.
maximum moment is 42.9.